Seaboon Pickens turned a $2,500 investment into one of America's largest independently owned oil companies. It's called Mesa Petroleum. Then, at the age of 68, he supposedly retired, only to begin again at 70, a whole new career in capital management. The man's amazing. If you don't know about him, you should. He's been around forever sharing with people ideas how to succeed. He's a guy, by the way, first of all, Boone, I want to thank you for coming. You bet. Um, you're a guy that doesn't know anything about retirement. You're a guy that adds value constantly. We talk about taxes here. You paid how much in taxes in the last 14 years since you were 70? You're 84 now, right? That's right. How much have you paid? 665 million. Not bad. You've <clears throat> given away a billion in philanthropy during that Wait, time. A little over a billion. Now, most people at 65 are thinking, yeah, this is the end of the road for me. People in their 50s are thinking, you know, I'm getting old. What do you say to those people, and how do we dispel? Why do we have those myths? How do we dispel those myths for people? You're one, the greatest person I can put out there to dispel, but how can I you help people? I still have a lot of things to do. <laughs> that helps, and, doesn't it? And I'm running out of time. I realize that. So I'm always in a rush. Wow. Now, you also take care of yourself. You're very much oriented in health care. I know that you, at one point, cut your, the company costs in half in your business, in health care costs. How did you do that, and why are you so focused on health? I put in a fitness center in 1969, wow. and uh, we won... Uh, the most car, uh, the company that was most physically fit in America. We that was a contest at the Houstonian in Houston. Won it two times. Wow! Did you have incentives to get people to do it, or was it just a sense of pride? How did you? Did you cut your health care costs in half during that time? That was you were the model for it, and very few people have followed that. <clears throat> well, I had, I would speak anytime I had 25 new employees, that I would have a one-hour orientation, and when I finished, I said, we have a fitness center here. And I said, I would like to have a show of hands of those that will participate in the fitness program. Yeah. Well, here I am, the the boss, and I've got them cornered. <laughs> and so, so they all have to raise their hand. And I said, fine, you don't have to check in the fitness center. I have the list here. I said, all will participate. Sign my name, I'll give it to the fitness director, <laughs> and he'll be by to see you in the next two days. Nothing like leverage to get That's the job right. done. Tell me, let's talk about the Pickens plan. You've got a plan that will save this country, first of all, provide 600,000 jobs. No one seems to argue with that. It provide a savings of about $100 billion. It'll reduce our need for OPEC oil by 75%. And, I mean, it sounds like a, a plan too good to be true. What's the plan? The, I started this four years ago, and I've spent a lot of money promoting the plan. I feel like I've been successful. We've had one vote in the Senate. And you got 51 votes, didn't you? That's right. So why didn't it get passed? Well, it, uh, this was an amendment to the transportation bill. Yes. And so it had to be voted on by the Senate as to whether 18-wheelers on natural gas was germane to the transportation bill. You're following this. No, yes. I'm not, but I get the idea. Okay. They played, so, they played with the rules, so you had to get 60 votes instead? Well, they voted as non-germane, hmm. and I got 51. Now, that'll win in the Big 12, but it won't win in Washington when it's non, not germane to the bill. So you're nine votes short this time. I know you don't ever give up. Let's be clear. What you're really saying is we have about 15% of our imported oil that comes uh, that we're utilizing for big trucks. We can do solar. We've proven that for cars, but these 18-wheelers, we can't do it. So we need transition fuel. And the fuel now, we you have, can't use solar for cars. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I'm pointing out. So really, we have more natural gas now than Saudi Arabia? Oh, we have. You As take, oil? We have more natural gas than any country in the world. Amazing. And so you, if you take it to what we call barrels of oil equivalent, we actually have three times as much oil, not oil, but as barrels of oil equivalent, yes. uh, natural gas, than the Saudis have. That's I mean, amazing. here we are with it. it, it this, what we've got to do for 40 years, we have, we have imported oil and we have been connected to the, to the Mideast. Okay, so we have now have enough oil and natural gas to get off that. If you look at the Straits of Hormuz today, there's 17 million barrels of oil goes through the Straits today. Yes. Only 2.4 million barrels of that is out and Comes is to coming to us. Okay, we don't need that. We can go without it. Now, we, if that's the case, we've got to look at our whole situation different. Our energy has, we have more energy uh, cheapest energy in the world, and we have more energy than anybody else has in the world. So, but we're not deploying it right. In other words, you're saying to us that if we just took those 18-wheelers and in five years we can convert those to natural gas, it saves money, 
but it also saves the oil. We can reduce by 75 percent our OPEC. Sure, we don't. The 2.4 million barrels that we get from the Straits Hormuz, we have the fifth fleet over there. Yes. We have four carriers, two directly in the Persian Gulf, two outside but close, and and all of that's going on. At the same time, we're getting people killed every day. Yeah. Now we have this situation in Libya and Egypt. Uh, I would get out of the Mideast is what I'd do. And we can do it in five years. Oh, we can get out of the Mideast so, so a lot quicker than that. Why aren't we getting those nine votes? Why doesn't President Obama step in and say we're going to take all of the vehicles the U.S. government has and put them on natural gas? That's just 200,000 is what it is. Not be. big enough. No, it, no. Would it lead by yeah, example? No, but it, exactly. That's leadership if he did that. It doesn't have to go on natural gas. Put it on domestic fuel hmm. is what you need to do. Get off of OPEC oil. But oil that we purchase from the Mideast, from Saudi Arabia in particular, some part of that money goes to the Taliban. Okay, just get out of there exactly. and come home. And they don't want us there. You're trying to change a culture that has been there for centuries. Yeah. And, it, you know, you want, you want to change it to democ a democracy? If they came over here and imposed their culture on us, we would, of course, we would not even yeah. consider it. But, and they're the, that's their attitude, too. Most, they people, are not not at, most people are not good at changing their spouse. How are they going to do it? Their exactly. Culture, right? <laughs> Tell me something. We're, we're going to run to our final segment. We're going to bring everybody back together here. We're going to have you sit uh, with kind of our economic war team. So when you come back,